Commerce Alive to Die presents GC Murphy. For more than 80 years GC Murphy Company trademark connected people from all walks of life throughout the eastern and midwestern United States. In small mining towns in Appalachia Murphy's low-priced quality merchandise liberated residents from the tyranny of coal company-owned stores. In beach and resort towns from Delaware to Florida Murphy's stores offered vacationers a place to find inexpensive souvenirs and staple items like cosmetics. Before there were fast food chains Murphy's lunch counters in cities large and small united rich and poor men and women who needed a quick cheap and filling bite to eat before returning to the office or factory. Many middle class Americans found shares of GC Murphy Company first listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1931 under the ticker symbol MPH to be a safe investment, and Murphy's provided hundreds of thousands of boys and girls with their first real job thanks to the Murphy's executive training program many stayed with the company for their entire careers rising to top level positions with the discount chains or starting their own businesses. Founded in 1906 in McKeesport, Pennsylvania by George Clinton Murphy the GC Murphy Company grew to include more than 500 stores including the big suburban Murphy's Marts before its acquisition by Ames Department Stores Incorporated in 1985. The GC Murphy Variety Stores, or 5 and 10 survived a little while longer before being absorbed by longtime competitor McCrory Stores. Dime stores revolutionized American retailing in the late 19th century. Until their creation shoppers had to ask clerks to get merchandise for them and often the prices varied depending on the store owner's whims. When Frank W. Woolworth opened his first great 5 cent store in Utica, New York in 1879 all of the items were on display where consumers could inspect and handle them prior to purchase. And as the name implied everything in the great 5 cent store was priced at just a nickel though later, Woolworth added 10 cent items to improve the mix of merchandise he could offer. Pennsylvania with its mix of dense urban centers and rural country towns proved to be a fertile place for five and dime stores. Woolworth found the Utica location unsuccessful and after a few months closed the store and opened one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania where he found a ready market among the area's Amish farmers, businessmen and factory and railroad workers. By 1881 Woolworth had stores throughout central Pennsylvania and parts of New York. John G. McCrory saw Woolworth's success and brought the dime store concept to the coal mining town of Scottsdale, Pennsylvania south of Pittsburgh in 1882. The McCrory chain spread to several cities including Jamestown, New York where George Murphy became manager of a McCrory store in 1896. When McCrory and Sebastian S. Kresge opened a new dime store in Detroit, Mitch Murphy was tapped to manage it only to leave the chain a short time later to open his own dime stores in Pittsburgh. George Murphy sold his first chain of Murphy stores to F.W. Woolworth Co. in the early 1900s then started another chain by opening a new dime store on 5th Avenue and Sheridan Street in McKeesport near the busy Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Station and the entrance to the National Tube Co. Works then the largest pipe making plant in the U.S. After Murphy's death, two McCrory executives John S. Mack and Walter C. Shaw left that established company and purchased the fledgling G.C. Murphy Company in 1911. They quickly turned the money-losing chain of about a dozen stores into a thriving enterprise, and soon more Murphy stores appeared, as Shaw and Mack spotted new markets or bought out smaller competitors. By 1926 GC Murphy Company had opened a New York City buying office so that its sales forces would be closer to national fashion and manufacturing companies though until the very end, Murphy's would proudly headquartered in McKeesport. A new store in Pittsburgh's Golden Triangle was constructed at a cost of $250,000 and would long serve as one of Murphy's flagships along with the large landmark store in Washington DC not far from Capitol Hill. 
In the 1930s cash-strapped Americans found that shopping at Murphy's was a good way for them to save money and the company thrived despite the Great Depression. From 1929 until 1934 sales increased from $15.7 million to $28 million and there were soon 181 Murphy stores in 11 states. World War II material and manpower shortages prevented the company from expanding but by 1950 Murphy's was up to full strength again. A philanthropic arm the G.C. Murphy Company Foundation was formed in 1952 and survives to this day. Murphy's was the first variety store chain to use television commercials and was an early adopter of computers to speed bookkeeping and accounting work. The number of Murphy's stores jumped with the purchase of Morris stores in the Midwest and Murphy's soon followed its customers to the suburbs with the opening of its first shopping center locations in Erie, Pennsylvania and Brentwood, Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh in 1955. G.C. Murphy Company greatly expanded its presence south of the Mason-Dixon line with the acquisition of the 112-store Morgan and Lindsay chain and moved into the department store business with the purchase of Cobbs Bruners and Terry Paris stores in Texas. In 1967 Murphy's launched what the company called its AA or AA program in larger store location. The AA program stressed more trendy merchandise, better advertising, longer hours and sold items grouped by themes rather than departments. Though the AA program was not as successful as the company had hoped the experience did prove valuable as Murphy's moved into the operation of its large discount stores Murphy's Marts in 1970. The first mart opened in Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Pittsburgh, and was an immediate success. By 1976, the nation's bicentennial and Murphy's 70th anniversary, the company operated 529 stores, many of them marts which featured large aisles, free parking, and improved mixes of men's and women's clothing and wearables. Many marts also had additional services like garden centers or auto repair and were usually located in shopping malls or paired with supermarkets. Murphy's Marks were soon generating a large share of the company's profits though the variety stores remained an important part of its business and were continually updated to keep with the times. In 1984 despite an economic downturn in many of the northeastern markets where Murphy's stores were located GC Murphy Company remained profitable and relatively debt-free and presented an attractive target for so-called corporate raiders. Two investors soon cornered the market on Murphy stock which eventually jumped from $9 to $47 per share. Attempts by Murphy's executives to keep the company independent were not successful and Ames Department Stores Incorporated of Rocky Hill Con purchased the GC Murphy Company in 1985 for $198 million. The Murphy's Marts were converted to Ames Stores while the Variety Stores were spun off into a separate Ames division still based in McKee Sport. Free to focus their efforts on the variety stores again Murphy executives rose to the challenge and the old dime stores had a brief renaissance though many smaller locations were closed. The good times were not to last unfortunately. In 1988 Ames purchased the failing Zayer department stores for $800 million and a year later in need of cash spun off its Murphy division to the parent company of McCrory stores. The McKee Sport office was closed and about 100 remaining GC Murphy company variety stores were absorbed by McCrory which also operated other dime stores under the names of several traditional Murphy competitors including McClellan HL, Greens and TGNY. Saddled with debt as the result of several complicated stock transactions in the 1980s and 1990s and overextended on credit McCrory Corp filed for bankruptcy in 2001 and liquidated a short time later. Only 200 locations including a handful still operating as GC Murphy remained. Those last GC Murphy stores were to longtime Murphy employees a pale imitation of the brightly lit well-stocked Murphy stores that delighted four generations of shoppers looking for sewing notions candy toys clothes to tools and pets.
Today many Murphy's retirees remain active and in close contact. Some employees moved on to work for other retailing chains or launched their own businesses and former company executives and retirees maintain Murphy's tradition of supporting local charities through the GC Murphy Company Foundation. Though his red and gold 5 and 10s no longer anchor downtown streets from New England to Mexico George C. Murphy would likely be pleased to know that his legacy of service to the community and to consumers is carried on by former Murphy employees across the U.S. And successful business owners would be wise to remember G.C. Murphy Company's fundamentals of doing business laid out by J.S. Mack and W.C. Shaw in the 1920s have what the people want let them know you have it and organize to serve them quickly courteously and satisfactorily. It's reading, writing, and Wrangler at Murphy's Mart's back-to-school sale. Get men's denim Wranglers for $13.96, boys' straight legs for $10.96, and junior and Mrs. Wranglers for just $16.96. And step into fall with men's, women's, and teens' Puma Cyclone 2 joggers for just $15. Murphy's Mart, where looking smart and shopping smart are the golden rules for back-to-school. Murphy's Smart, you are smart for back-to-school shop. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.